Jane Usher, who has a few moments uh, with which she can chat with us. Come on up. Neighbors, good afternoon. Let me see if I can adjust this. Maybe not. No. Uh, so thank you for understanding that this morning I was at my son. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, at my son's concert, which was really a, a, a vocal concert at Harvard Westlake Upper School, which was really so magical, and I wish we all could have been there because it would give a, a lightness to our day that maybe it's lacking. It was really beautiful. But here I am. Um, let's talk about just a couple of things. Um, as you guys know, even though I sit on the board of a neighborhood council, Greater Wilshire, with the indubitable, where is he, Jack Humphreyville? Right. Right. Jack, where are you? Okay, yeah. indomitable. Um, Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, thank you, Steve. Uh, even though that is my genesis, um, some of you don't know that in the early 90s, I was counsel to the mayor, Tom Bradley. Subsequent to that, I served as the president of the planning commission and I am now a special assistant city attorney under Carmen Trutanich. And each of those roles obliges me to perform and respond to you in a different way. So let me start by saying with apology and with humility, now that I serve as a city attorney, my voice is that of the city attorney. And here would be the message that I want you to hear. So what I'm basically saying is, my personal voice is not the voice I speak to you today. I speak to you in my professional capacity. And I don't think you would have it any other way. So here's what the city attorney's mantra is on your issues, on all issues. And for the many of you who've been in the office and sat with us, you know this. We're gonna look at the law in each and every issue, in each and every instance, and we're gonna come up with what we think is the right answer. The law is sufficiently fluid and in motion. There are always reasonable minds who differ as to what is the right answer. But Carmen Trutanich has said to all of us, your obligation to me is to give me the best, most solid, straight and honorable answer. And that answer will be given without, I'm sorry, without attentiveness to the political niceties of the answer. It will be based on the law. And many people bristle at this because they say your city attorney is an elected official, therefore he's a politician, therefore he must be sensitive to political nuance. I hope we don't come forward to you as a deaf, dumb, and blind, but we do intend to come forward to you as straight and honorable, a department, an office, an elected official on whom you can count and rely to give you the legitimate answer. Why do I spend so much time on that? Because I felt uncomfortable coming this morning, even with my son's concert having concluded, because I don't want you to sense or feel that the city attorney is going to be oppositional to anybody in City Hall. Each office, each official, each department, including the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and its board, they are all the clients of this office, and we owe them all the same dignity, courtesy, and respect of a straight answer. So if your sense or sensibility was that somehow the city attorney was going to become oppositional to another city office or department in sorting our way, navigating through this very complicated budget crisis, I can't provide that for you. What I can provide is the following. Uh, about, well, it may be more than two weeks ago, but approximately two weeks ago, the mayor's office and the city attorney's office began working through the complex legal issues that surround the mayor's uh, approach to, to Dunn's uh, involvement in the budget solution. You knew that the first approach was, it came out publicly as something like, cut the department cut its budget, cut its funding, potentially cut its elections. That was what was publicly reported. 
but if you can imagine for the moment the mayor's office in conjunction with our office taking a step back and looking at the legality. So let's, let's talk about where those lie. And I've got a room of very smart people. You'll recite the charter sections better than I will. But you know that charter sections in the 900s create the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, talk about its lifespan, its powers, its duties, and so forth. You know, although it probably pains us all to acknowledge this, that those charter sections do say that for the first five years of the department's existence, its powers and duties can't be transferred. But only for those first five years, and we are all past that milestone. What do I mean by that? Well, then the door is obviously open for a transfer of powers and duties. After you read the 900 sections, and I want you to look at as we are, the sections that talk about your budget, they're in the 900 sections as well. Then we have to go back and look at the budget processes and transfer powers that are set forth more generically, not specifically with respect to Dunn, but more generically in the charter. And you'll look at section 514, which talks about transfer but read through also the budget process that the charter establishes. That's what we've done. The intention here, as much as it, it kills me to say it, is to find ways to, for whatever the mayor's questions are, he's a client, we're trying to find ways, answers for him that accomplish his objectives. So when he says to a city attorney or this office, can I do fill in the blank? We're going to give him a faithful answer to that question without reference to whether we're in love with the answer. Everybody in agreement? We're all on the same page here? Um, because of my own personal background, uh, I'm a true believer. Uh, grassroots, outreach, citizen engagement, uh, all the things that Carol Baker Tharp, her legacy, all the things that she taught us all. Um, whatever the outcome, because of the budget crisis, uh, I trust, I absolutely trust the people in this room to work together in a super smart way to keep the objectives that we were all involved in establishing and creating, to keep them marching forward at a very earnest and forthright pace. We cannot lose that. I mean, I have so many friends of so many years long standing in this audience. I'd be remiss if I said to you, I didn't care deeply. I care deeply about this. But the legal advice that the office is going to give, not only to the mayor's office, but to the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners will be the same. And I cannot promise you that it will be pretty, but it will be honorable. I'm happy to entertain questions. Thanks. 